Despite having fled the horror of war, the refugees in the Mvepi refugee camp in Uganda are resilient and still hopeful for their future. Since 2016, nearly one million South Sudanese have fled the civil war in their young country, flooding across the border into Uganda and other neighboring countries. Reports of horrific atrocities, murder, rape, looting, burning homes, disease, and famine plagued the people of this once proud nation, which celebrated its independence just six years ago. Harriet Yada and her husband abandoned their village in Ye several months ago after a surge in violence left residents fleeing for their lives. We left everything in the house. We just ran like this. Without anything, even you, you will not even mind to take your sandals. You just move barefooted like that. If you're moving on the road, you may find even a dead person on the roadside. The people who are killing the civilians were not the rebels, but the government armies are the one doing that. At the time you may find at night someone knocks at your door, they kill you. That's the same people killing us. That's why we also decided to come to Uganda for help. The fastest growing refugee crisis in the world, Uganda is now hosting over 1.2 million refugees. With an average of 2,000 arrivals a day from South Sudan alone, an enormous strain has been placed on the humanitarian response. We are very grateful for everything that the people and the authorities in this region have been doing. Thank you. Because uh, without your generosity, these people would be in a horrible situation. And thanks, I know the pressure and the impact and the, the problems this is causing, but we are very, very grateful. And we hope in South Sudan, six million people are struggling to find the food that they need to survive. At the height of the famine, one in 5,000 people died of starvation. Many that fled the famine at home now have crossed the border to find shortages in the camps in Uganda. Due to overwhelming numbers, food rations were reportedly cut in half. We are living in the village. We could dig and get the food. But now here you also know this one. The place is all rocky. How can we dig? But here what is really making us at least to think also of going back is the food, the food issue. It has not reached one month. We are even thinking of going back so that we shall be killed by the guns, but it's also very difficult. It's painful. Like Harriet, Edward and his family were fortunate to escape the violence. Sadly, five of his brothers were murdered when returning home to bring food back to the bush. There's rampant killing that was going on. There's rape. There's adoption of young children into the army. Food insecurity, of course, is already part of violence. Edward had a well-paying job supporting a family of six through his work as a supervisor with the Norwegian People's Aid in the capital of Juba. When hostilities got too high for the family in Ye, Edward set a plan into action to meet them in Uganda. I cannot be enjoying getting money while I'm losing my children. So I better leave the money and I come to sit with my children and take care of them. They have to be safe. Money cannot buy life. Many of the refugees are arriving from Ye, once known to be the breadbasket of South Sudan. Now, due to a surge in violence, nearly 70% of the population there is displaced. In Ye, people were not used to uh, aidings, like UNSR giving food, because people produce their own food. But because of the insecurity, and even food that they started producing, all this food had been left uh, because of the threat. Once you go back to collect your food, you'll definitely be killed. The primary responsibility for the protection of civilians rests with the South Sudanese government, along with its armed forces who acknowledge the challenge. The SPL is there to facilitate, to provide security. This is an obligation for the SPL to see to that civilians are protected. War is ugly, you know, at, at any capacity. When there is war, there, there must be displacement. There must be those who are caught up in crossfire. There must be victims. There will be those who would not be able to access, you know, their farms as it used to be. Dominic says those who disrupt the peace process by committing acts of violence against the community should be held accountable. So I, I, I don't think whether there is a reason for, 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 for the for SPL today after the independent and then turn to kill its own citizen. It is ridiculous. If there are cases, those cases are just uh, done by individuals. And those individuals 
will, will be dealt with, with with SPLA justice. Peacekeepers serving with the United Nations mission in South Sudan face daily challenges protecting civilians and working towards durable peace. However, with no end in sight to the war, high volumes of refugees continue to flee the war-torn country. Many say that without peace, returning home may not be an option. Sudan was not in peace. My people was being killed too much. I'm not happy for that. Peace in South Sudan is a must for these people to be able to have a future.